Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I am back with a video review. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at the Nintendo eShop title of Throne or Throne Breaker, The Witcher's Tale, part of the whole Witcher, the Witcher universe, and all that stuff for the Nintendo Switch. Um, game is also available on the. Oh, let's see if I can get it right. Game is also available on the. PS4, Xbox One, and PC, I believe Steam, and I think GOG. I apologize if I'm not saying the name correctly. And if you're interested in any gameplay footage of me playing um, Throne, Throne Breaker, The Witcher's Tale, I'll have a link in the description down below. Plus, I want to give my updates on a story I put on on, on my My Two Cent one. And this one had to do with, in regards of the whole GeForce Now situation, it seems that there may have been more to the whole... NVIDIA GeForce and Activision Blizzard kind of situations. I will get to that one um, once I finish my review of Thronebreaker The Witcher's Tale. Um, lately, the Witcher name and the Witcher series has really started to caught a lot of people's attention, though. Um, we all know about the series. This has been on Netflix and has really done very well. Um, we know that the fact that the series also made its way over to the Nintendo Switch, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, a game that no one thought in a million years would even make its way onto a system like the Nintendo Switch, and yet... Saber Interactive, the folks who handled the port house, was able to bring that game over. Obviously, certain compromises had to be made, and it is, and there's no denying the fact that the Switch version isn't going to look as nearly as good as, say, the PS4, the Xbox One, or the PC version, for that matter. But the fact that that game even exists is pretty, pretty amazing. Not to mention, supposedly CD Projekt Red was happy with the sales numbers on that one. So it was kind of interesting to see um, CD Projekt Red decide to bring over um, more Witcher to the Nintendo Switch in the in the way of Thornbreaker: The Witcher's Tale, which is basically a single-player game of of basically the Gwent card games. I'm sure most of you, some people may or may not like it from the Witcher series. Um, there is a Gwent card game to, to you could download. I think from ISO Android. I think it's also on PC as well. That's sort of a online game this is basically a single player story driven type of a game and i will say that while i'm not a big fan of the whole gwent card games though i do appreciate what cd project red is trying to do with this game especially um basically being more witcher more of, of the witcher which certainly isn't a bad thing indeed um so why don't we get started with our pros and cons and we'll start off first with the pros and that is the visuals. Although this game, at least as far as I remember reading, runs on the Unity engine, I have to say the visuals of the game look nice. It basically f looks like something you would see out of, say, like a, like if you read like a graphic novel and so forth. So I like the visual art style that CD Projekt Red went with in terms of Thornbreaker, A Witcher Tale. So as far as the visuals, though, um, they look nice. I like the graphic novel art style to it. Uh, the next thing I do want to talk about is the story, and I do have to say, the world of the whole, you know, from the Witcher series and all that stuff is very interesting indeed, and the story is just as enjoyable as, say, like, Witcher 3 um, Wild Hunt is. Excuse me one second. No, you basically, you do play as, you know, a ruler of Riverdale and... I uh, forgot the other name, I apologize though. And you do, not only with the card games, you do basically, not only with the story, you do also have to make choices that could basically impact um, certain situations, including the moral of your troops and so forth. So, I mean, this, but I will say as far as the story goes, um, it's really good. I really enjoy the story in uh, Throne Breaker. And last but not least is the gameplay. Now, there is basically two parts of the gameplay. There is the exploration part and the Gwent card part. The exploration part, you basically are looking for like loot, like wood, coins, and basically numbers of troops and so forth. You do, you find these throughout the world map as you move your character around and basically it, in a... Um, basically in a fixed camera kind of view and then of course there are the battles and this is where the game This is where the Gwent card games um, Play get in those who have played the Gwent card games on in Witcher 3 Wild Hunt 
will probably be familiar uh, with the gameplay though. And it, it's not horrible or anything like that. I'm not a big fan of the Gwent card games though. But after a couple battles though, I started to get somewhat of the idea of how to play the game indeed. Um, it is worth pointing out that you could play this game in adventure mode, although you could change the difficulty at any point in the game, in which you could, if you're having a hard time with the difficulties, you could sort of skip the battle. So some may argue that that is kind of cheating or that's kind of baby mode and all that stuff. And to some degree, I can understand the argument, but I'm not against it either. And I'll be honest with you, if you see any of the gameplay footage, I do play this game in um, adventure mode indeed. But if you are a fan of the Gwent um, card game or you like the Gwent card gameplay though, you'll definitely like um, Thornbreaker, um, The Witcher Tale. And I will say the gameplay though, um, it's fun. I mean, it's not terrible, but it is um, fun. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to get to part two, which are the cons. And I want to give an update on the story in regards to the whole NVIDIA GeForce Now situation. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video review, of re excuse me, video review, <laughs> I had a hard time saying that one, of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tale for the Nintendo Switch. As I mentioned earlier, the game's also available on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So now that we gave you the pros, why don't we get started with the cons, and there are really only two cons I could think of in regards of Thronebreaker. Uh, the first one has to do with the controls in terms of moving around your, your character. Now, I won't say the controls are awful or terrible when it comes to moving your character around in the game or anything like that. The thing is, is that because the game uses sort of a fixed camera, though, it can be a little, it can be a little bit difficult at times, especially like, say, if you see like an item that you could pick up, but because there might be like rocks or trees and they're in the way and you can't see the path that you can like go around them and all that stuff. So because of the fixed camera, it can make moving your character, um, it can be, it can be tricky at times. Again, it doesn't make the game unplayable or anything like that. It's just can, it just can be difficult at times indeed. And last but not least has to do with the whole Gwent card games part of the games. Now, as I mentioned before, though, I did think the gameplay was fun, and after a while, I got around to playing, got the idea of the whole Gwent card things, a lot of that stuff, and I was doing, I certainly felt, at least from my perspective, I was, felt like I was doing a bit better than, what, than when I was playing, like, the card games on The Witcher and all that stuff. That said, though, it is still the Gwent card games from, you know, the Witcher series and all, and all that. And not everybody is into that kind of thing. And that could be the big turnoff in terms of this game and all that stuff. And it, it can be very, there is a, it can be very difficult to understand how the whole card system works and all that stuff. Again, it took me a little bit, but I think I get a good idea of how the game is played and all but there are some who will try and kind of struggle with this, though. Luckily, there is adventure mode. It is sort of an easy mode to the game. You can sort of, it sort of, it sort of helps you a little bit and all that stuff. But I do feel the Gwent card games do have somewhat of a learning curve. And if you didn't enjoy the Gwent card games from The Witcher or like Witcher 3 to be exact, your pro chances are you're not going to like it here in um, Thronebreaker. Overall... Thronebreaker, in my view, is certainly a good game. Do I think it's going to overtake? Do I think it can overtake Witcher Three or any way? Um, no. Um, I still I think the art style looks nice. Um, the story is good. It's just the gameplay part is that might be the gameplay part might appeal to some people. It might turn some people off, and that's because it uses the Gwent cards, though, which some people will like, some people won't, and everything like that. So I will say it's not an awful game, but if I had to choose between playing Thronebreaker or Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, I prefer to play Witcher 3 Wild Hunt over Thronebreaker to be exact. That being said, though, I don't think the game is terrible. 
And I like the idea of what CD Projekt Red is doing. I would like to see more of the lore and the world of The Witcher and all that stuff. So I like what CD Projekt Red is doing with this though. So overall, I would say it's not a bad game. If you like the Gwent card games, you'll probably like Thornbreaker, The Witcher Tale. If you didn't like the the like the Gwent card games, then chances are you're probably not going to like Thornbreaker, The Witcher Tale. So to me, it's not it's a good game, but it's going to depend on how you feel about the whole Gwent card games um, overall. <clears throat> Okay, uh, before I be before I end this uh, video though and any everything like that, I do want to give an update on a story that um, uh, pro broke out this week. That I mean, or last week to be exact, since this video will probably come up on Tuesday. Over the in regards of the whole Nvidia GeForce Now situation. Now, as some of you are aware, it was reported that a lot of the games from Activision Blizzard were taken off of the GeForce Now servers. Though this gave the impression, though that this gave the impression that because they signed a deal with Google and all that stuff, that their games will appear on Stadia and all. It also raised the whole issue with the whole cloud streaming and all that stuff, considering the positive response GeForce Now has um, recently gotten. And some people like the service and all, and some people feel the service is better than what Google's offering with Google Stadia and all. Well, apparently a article story started to come out on Friday that apparently it seems as though Activision Blizzard uh, removing their games may have not may have not been how it turned out to be, as it supposedly may have been done with a due to a misunderstanding. Um, in an article posted on GameSpot, it, it reads that, quote, Activision GeForce Now issue was due to misunderstanding, says NVIDIA. NVIDIA says it hopes to, wor to work more with Activision in the future. The article reads, quote, when NVIDIA abruptly pulls support from the entire library of Activision Blizzard's game on its GeForce Now streaming service, it offered little explanation other than casting blame towards the publisher. NVIDIA has now provided a more detailed and softer explanation, chalking up to a simple misunderstanding. Bloomberg reported that since Activision had participated in the beta test, NVIDIA mistakenly thought the, the agreement extended into the free trial period for founders. The issue came up because Activision wanted a new commercial agreement for the general public launch, the company said. Activision Blizzard um, has been a fantastic partner during the GeForce Now beta, which we took to include the free trial period of our founder's membership, NVIDIA said in a statement. Recognizing the misunderstanding, we removed their games from our surface with hopes that we could work with them to re-able the, these and more in the future. Um, this, the statement cast light on what happened, prompting the issue, but noticeably didn't lay out the details on what we can expect the library um, to return. Um, that means that games published by Activision Blizzard, including Overwatch, Sekiron, Shadow Die Twice, and War of Warcraft, will no longer be playable via the um, streaming tech. Customers who have purchased the game will still have access um, to them, however. So, according to what this article is saying, and if this is correct though, it appears as though that this might have, this sounds like this was on um, NVIDIA side of it, as there was sort of a miscommunication or misunderstanding. If if what they're saying is true, if what NVIDIA is saying is correct, then yeah, that, that's not good indeed. The fact that there was a clear misunderstanding on the situation really, that's not something you want to have, especially with something like GeForce Now that you recently launched, which I will say, based on my time with it, and I'm hoping to get a my review slash thought on it soon um it i will say i my experience has been pretty positive um towards it i do think that it still doesn't change the fact that this highlights one of the concerns about cloud streaming or the whole game streaming thing about the whole issues of rights and ownerships of of it all so it still raises some concerns and it doesn't change some of the image that um, Activision Blizzard has had, as many still believe that Activision Blizzard pulled their games out, that it's because of greed, that they want all the money in the world, 
combined with some of the reputation that they have earned um, over the years. But yeah, if this is on Nvidia's, if this turns out, if what Nvidia is saying is true and it's like on their pro, that this was on them and all that stuff, that's a big, well, oopsie on that part. Hopefully, um, and it does also kind of raise the question, did they have the same problem with companies like Rockstar, Square Enix, um, Capcom as well? Hopefully this issue could be um, ironed out as soon as possible because, I mean, again, I'm not big on the whole Call of Duty or World of Warcraft, but there are obviously some games people would love to have seen on GeForce now, like Sekiron, Shadow Die Twice, and so forth. So I'm hoping this issue can be resolved soon, but yeah, um, that's kind of a big oopsie on um, NVIDIA's side. <clears throat> Okay, um, this concludes my video review of Thornbreaker, um, The Witcher's Tale from the Nintendo Switch, and my thoughts on, or shall we say, an update on the whole GeForce Now story. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about Thornbreaker, The Witcher Tale? Um, are you, is this the kind of game you would like to see on the Nintendo Switch? Do you like the fact, do you like the idea of a single player linear story, story game that uses the Gwent cards gameplay? Or do you think they should have gone with something like maybe a traditional RPG? Do you like the idea of exploring more of the Witcher in general? Um, do you think the game will do well on the Nintendo Switch? And what are your thoughts about the whole situation with the GeForce Now story now that it appears that this was a misunderstanding, though? Do you still think that this is Activision's Blizzard's fault? Or do you think this is NVIDIA's fault? Do you think NVIDIA screwed up? Or do you think Activision Blizzard screwed up? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Um, links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, wish you all a good day then. Bye!